Friday, you guys. I'm super excited for this long weekend. And um, it's Memorial Day weekend. And a lot of people are out of town. Um, I have some friends who are heading to Palm Springs, some friends that went to Hawaii, some friends that are just getting out of town. I don't think they're going too far. But it's like, oh, okay, everybody's gone. Oh, well. Um, so I hope everyone's having a good Friday. Yeah, Lisa is a bum. Okay, we're going to go ahead. No, she's not a bum. She's a bum sitting on a beach in Hawaii right now. Hello. Um, you guys, so um, today I'm going to show you guys how to make three different recipes using peaches. Now, summer's here. I think it's officially summer, right? Um, so summer is here, and so there's a lot of peaches and a lot of this, like, summertime fruit. <laughs> so I, I love peaches. Actually, okay, I'm going to, like, clarify this real quick. I've got some peaches, and I have some nectarines. Can you guys tell the difference? Mm -mm -mm. Okay. The only difference between a peach and a nectarine is the fact that a peach is fuzzy, and a nectarine is smooth. So... They do taste very similar, and the nectarine is an offshoot of the peach. So just so you know, they are in the same family. I tend to prefer um, nectarines, but I brought some peaches because I said this was peaches, so I'll mix the two. <laughs> so it's summertime. We're going to make a peach cobbler. Actually, it's a mini peach cobbler, and then I'm going to show you guys how to put together a grilled peach. We're going to grill some peaches. But then we're going to lay it out on a um, platter with some prosciutto and some blue cheese. And maybe we'll drizzle some balsamic or some honey. And we'll see how I feel during that part of the show. And then we're going to make um, peaches and, uh, what is it, peaches and cream. But it's not the normal cream. It's a healthier, more tangy, thicker cream. Okay, so since we have to bake, let's go ahead um, and start with the mini peach cobbler. You want to start by putting your stove onto three, your stove, you want to get your oven set to 350. So we've already got it set to 350. And look, you guys, I have champagne today because we're celebrating. Um, <laughs> we're celebrating peaches <laughs> and everybody's safe travels and Memorial Day weekend. So cheers, everyone. Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. Start of summer. All right. Is it me that, <laughs> yeah. do I seem flustered? What? No. Okay, you guys. Let's start with getting our batter ready um, to make the peach cobbler. Now we're gonna mix, there's only five ingredients in this, which makes it, it it's amazing. Oh, I gotta tell you guys something funny real quick. So, yay, we got the thumbs up. Is Lisa in yet? Oh, I'm sure she'll let me know when she's in. Um, now, you guys, my mom, is Lisa! Oh, I want you to send me a picture from Hawaii right now so I can look at it and, and fantasize about being there with you guys. <laughs> um, you guys, my mom, uh, really? Well, I'm not. <laughs> um, uh, oh my gosh, I was just going to say, okay, forget it. Anyways, you guys, my mom was so excited a few years ago when she found the peach cobbler. Now, you have to remember, my mom came here to the States when she was, I think, 16, 17 years old. And so she called me a few years ago, and she was like, team, team, I make a fruit. And I was like, what, what? Because we're always talking about different recipes. And she's like, I make a fruit with a peach. And I'm like, oh my God, well, what is it? And where did you get this recipe from? And she goes, it's from a Mata Stu. I watch Mata Stu on TV. And so I'm like, Mata Stu, I, I, I'm obviously not sure who that is. And so this is our conversations all the time, me trying to pick apart exactly what she means. So she was actually talking about Martha Stewart. So she saw Martha Stewart on TV making a peach cobbler. And she was so excited that so she wanted to share the recipe. So she's like, I make a new fruit and it's a peach from Mata Stu. You guys, I, it's hilarious because I have a hard time sometimes understanding my mom. And then because I talk so fast, it's like I have to repeat myself two or three times and then get frustrated where if I would just talk slow to begin with, obviously she would get it. Okay, let's get to the mix. <laughs> I need to get, we're going to do um, a cup of flour. So, is 
everyone having a great day so far? It's beautiful here in LA. Now remember you guys, when you are baking, you want to do your ingredients separately dry and then the wet. So since I only, I have four dry ingredients and then a little bit of milk. So I'm going to go ahead and put all the dry. Now we're going to do one cup of sugar. Sugar, sugar. Oh, my God, it's heavy. Heavy. Think of like if you get all the sugar. Hmm. Where does it go? Where does it go? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I just did one cup of flour, you guys. Now I'm going to do one cup of sugar. Wait a minute. Hold on. You guys, I spent so much time talking. I did two cups of flour. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, my gosh. We're putting a cup back. Oh, what am I doing? Okay. Starting over. One cup of flour. One cup of sugar. Wow. That would have been crazy. One cup of sugar, and then I'm going to do two teaspoons of baking powder. Okay. Two teaspoons of baking powder. So I guess, you guys, this is sort of, um, well, technically it's not my mom's recipe. <laughs> but... I did make a few alterations, of course, because that's what everyone who's doing a recipe always makes it their own. Um, and then you put a pinch of salt. So, so far, you guys, hold on. One cup of flour, one cup of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder. I'm going to do, can you see it? A pinch. Okay, two. I'm going to do two pinches of salt, and then I'm going to just mix it all together before I add my three-fourths cup of milk. See, I'm just combining all, well, okay, I'm getting more outside than I am keeping it in the bowl. So I'm just gonna combine all of the dry ingredients so everything is mixed evenly. You can totally do this with a spoon. You don't need to bring out a whisk. You don't need a hand blender. Grab it, the milk. I'm going to need three-fourths a cup, three-fourths of a cup, three-fourths of a cup. Yeah. I get the Oh, my gosh. Are you guys? Thank you, Heather. Oh, send me a picture. Send me a picture right now with my phone. I want to see what you guys are doing. Oh, okay. One-fourth a cup. Two-fourths of a cup. Three-fourths of a cup. Yay. There we go. Now, I guess, look, I have my green drink <laughs> from my Bubble Lab. Well, it's in my Bubble Lab cup. The green drink is not from Bubble Lab. It's from my refrigerator. Mm. So good. Okay. Now you're just going to mix all of these together, all the ingredients together. So five ingredients. Now, you guys, a cobbler, a cobbler is... Um, you know, it's fruit, and, yeah, right between you and Lisa along my, in the comment section. My lord, you two. These two go at it all the time, like on my Facebook page. They reply, leave a comment, reply. It's, it's hilarious. Okay, look at this, you guys. Can you see that? Oh. Now, a cobbler is basically, it's just fruit and dough. And usually you're putting the fruit in, um, it's you put butter and then you put a little bit of fruit and then you put like the plots of dough on the top. So when you bake it, it creates these amazing juicy bubbles with the fruit and the dough. And if you look at it when it's all done, it does sort of represent or resemble, not represent, it resembles um, the cobblestone streets, you know, back like where they have cobblestone streets. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, wait, where's that picture? Oh, you guys, check it out. We are live in Hawaii, sort of. Okay, you got the dough mixed up. 
I'm going to set this aside. Now, I want to show you guys the only other ingredient now is a little bit of butter and the peaches. But the peaches, you guys, check this out. This morning, I cut up some peaches and I put them in the steamer basket. Okay, so I have some steamed peaches. Now, anytime you cook any type of fruit, it does amp up the flavor. It makes it a little more intense, like it's going to be a more intense um, peach flavor, and it's going to be a little more sweet. So, I did this ahead of time. It's going to cut down a bit, too, on the baking. Now, most of the times when you bake um, a cobbler, it's in an 8x8 pan or maybe a knife, or a rectangle pan, a 9x12 pan, and it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to bake it. Since we don't have that much time, that's why these are mini, and I want to show you guys, um, clear up some space, I want to show you guys what I'm going to use today. So I found these little um, muffin tins, and so I'm going to do one in here, and then I'm going to, once it's done cooking, I'm going to turn it over, and I want to see if it kind of looks like a, you know how a pineapple upside down cake looks? I want to see if this looks like a peach cobbler upside down. So we'll see. However, I'm also... I found these cute baking cups. You guys, this is, oh, it's so much fun going to these stores with all the baking and food supplies. These little cups, you guys can bake things up to, it says 428 degrees, not 425, not 430, 428. So you can put stuff in here, liquids and the cake batter, and it'll cook it up in these little containers. So now when you're done, you can either serve these with a little spoon or you can take them out. But like the wrapper is so cute, I think they're intended to be served um, in these little wrappers. Third thing, you guys can use a muffin tin and do the same thing that we're going to do here in just a few minutes in a muffin tin. But you do not want to use the um, cupcake liners. The, only, the reason we're using these is because you can actually bake in these. You all know you cannot bake. With just a cupcake. Oh, well, okay. If you put the cupcake liner in the thing, but then it's these aren't cupcakes. These are not cupcakes. So don't use a cupcake liner. Just bake them directly in the muffin tin. Ooh, or the cupcake tin. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Okay, we're still on our mini cobblers. <laughs> I've got my stick of butter that I have it's been sitting out for a while, so it is at room temperature. Temperature. Oh my god, what's the temperature in um, Hawaii, Lisa? Like, what do you guys, is that a real picture or is that like a stock photo? Is that like the picture from where you guys are sitting? Tell me, tell me. I'm living vicariously through her right now. Mm. Lisa. So I know that they've been up, it's like super, I don't even know what time it is in Hawaii. Okay, you guys. It is a real picture. Oh. All right. So to start, <laughs> to start, you guys, I'm going to do, well, how much batter do I have? Um, I'm going to do six little cupcakes like this, and then depending on how much batter I have left, we'll go ahead and um, make one of these little mini loaves. So I'm going to take just a little bit of butter. See this? Little, just a dab of butter, and I'm going to put it at the bottom of every a uh, little cup. All right. Butter, peaches, and dough. Mm. But I'm going to do butter, dough, and peaches because, like I said, I'm going to serve these in the cups. And so the star is, of course, the peaches. So I want the peaches on top. All right. Yay. little bit of butter. Now we're going to put... Uh, can you guys see her? Oh, yeah, you guys can see all this. Yeah. And now I'm going to put just a little bit of dough in each one. Okay, here we go. Filling it to the top. Ooh, these are going to be yummy. Ooh. That. Now, if you guys had to pick between peaches or nectarines, 
Which one would you do, peaches or nectarines? Or do you even know the difference? Peaches. Ooh, I need to save some. Okay, wow. I'm only gonna make four, not six, because I do wanna, I wanna check out this other tin. All right, I'm gonna take these two. Ooh, butter on the bottom, butter on the bottom. Okay. Oh, I don't wanna waste any better. Now, I've got these filled up with my dough. Okay. Now, I need to put a little butter. I'm gonna put a little butter, butter, butter. Everything is better with butter. I'm gonna put a little butter on the pan. Now, you, all, you guys know that butter makes everything taste better, right? Real butter, real butter. None of that fake margarine or spread something. What, what is this stuff called? Like spread, spread butter, butter spread, vegetable oil, sorry, butter. Okay, wait, what am I doing? Hold on. With these ones, I wanted to do, I want to present them where it goes peaches, dough, and then the butter. With this one, oh, peaches first, and then the dough. Oh my Lord, I'm confusing myself. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and top these little ones with some peaches. Oh, you guys! Now, remember, these are steamed, so they're already soft, and they're going to be... I didn't add any sugar, or I didn't add any sugar while, when I steamed these, because I like the fruit, just itself the fruit. There is enough natural sugar um, in the fruit that I don't even think you need to add. Plus, you guys... There's already a lot of sugar in the dough, right? Okay. Now look at look at how pretty those are. I gotta take a I gotta take a picture of these too. But I want to top them with a little bit of cinnamon. I will top them with a little bit of cinnamon. Ooh ooh ooh! Look at that! Ooh! Mmm! Mmm! Come out! Come out! Okay. Now let's do the other one. Uh, opposite. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to pour the rest of the peaches, okay, see this, in this container. Mm. All right. Spread it out like this. Ooh, look at that. Yay. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so fun. And then I'm going to take the rest of the dough. Oh, let me get a little spatula spatula. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna take the rest of the dough and just put it into the little mini loaf pan. Mmm. All right. Like this. There we go. Look at you guys. Oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. Oh, this is gonna be amazing. Yeah. Ooh, ugh. All right. Got it all. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. <laughs> I know I had a different sweater on, and oh my gosh, the sleeves were so, it's like they hung over my hands. I'm like, wow, that's been hanging in my closet for way too long. Okay, so this one, you guys, remember we buttered in the peaches, and then we put the dough on top, and I am, well, I'm going to spread a little bit of cinnamon, even though it's going to, when we turn it over, it will be on the bottom, but it'll still have that little hint of cinnamon. Ooh, ooh, look at it. Yeah. Okay, now, this is what we do. We take a baking sheet, and we're going to set these bits of yumminess on the sheet. Just like that. Okay, you guys, look. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Beautiful! Ah! Okay, now I'm going to put these in the oven, and I'm going to bake them while we make the other two recipes. So about 12 minutes, okay, you guys? 12 minutes on 350. Ew, that is so exciting. Okay, so next up, while that is baking, we're gonna make some, which one should we do next? 
I think um, I'm going to turn the grill on. We're going to do some grilled peaches. So I'm going to turn the grill on, but we're not doing the grilled peaches yet. Man, I wish you guys were all here. Wouldn't that be so amazing? Lisa, Heather, Robert. <laughs> I'm none of you guys. Hi, Chef. How are you? Chef Jay is in the house. Um, okay, you guys. I think what we're going to do next uh, is, um, yay, bring some ice cream. <laughs> I think you owe me some. Um, what we're going to make now, you guys, I think we'll go ahead and do the peaches and cream. Yeah, we're going to do the peaches and the cream. All right. So for the peaches and the cream, let me get back my cutting board. Oh yes, Robert, you're gonna be back to LA. Welcome back, what is that song? Dun 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 LA, or something like that. Okay, now you guys, for this one, you're gonna need some honey, and you're gonna need some labneh, or you can use sour cream. I have started using um, labne, which is a Mediterranean, it's, oh, you know how sour cream is to us? It is basically Mediterranean sour cream, but it's healthier, it's thicker, it has better ingredients, and it has a little bit of a taste. So I have actually started replacing, I don't even use sour cream anymore, I use labne um, with everything that calls for sour cream. So you could use Greek um, plain Greek yogurt. You can use sour cream. You can use labne. Now, you guys, gosh, I just realized I say you guys a lot. Like, I counted the last segment, and I think I might have said it like 43 times. So weird, huh? With this one, <sighs> what we're making is peaches and cream. Now, a lot of times with cream, people use Cool Whip, or they use, well, real whipping cream that you might mix a little vanilla extract in. With this one, we're mixing labneh, we're gonna sweeten it up with honey. So we're mixing the labneh and the honey to give us a rich, tangy, sweet, healthier cream that I guarantee you, no one will even know that it's not whipping cream, like actual whipping cream. Oh, okay. So let's make our little dip first, and then we'll cut up, we're gonna slice up the peaches. Okay. Mmm, 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 mmm. so good, so good. So tangy, so good, so thick. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of the labneh and just put it in a cute little serving bowl. Okay, just like this. See that? Mmm, mmm, mmm. I'm gonna take my honey. All right, I'm probably using what is that? Teaspoon. <laughs> A teaspoon of honey on the top. Oh my gosh, the griddle is making me so hot. Now you're just going to mix this up. Oh, it looks, ooh, you know what this looks like? It looks like gelato ice cream with thick, yummy honey. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to mix this up. <laughs> oh, mix this all up. Okay, so I'm going to recommend using a different bowl to mix this in. And what am I thinking? And then you're going to put, um, <laughs> and then you're going to put this in a pretty bowl. But, more today. So you just mix it up, mix it up, mix it up. Mm. Okay. Mm. Oh my god, oh my god. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. It's delicious. Oh my god! Oh my god, it's so good. Oh. Ooh, girl. You guys. Oh, Lisa! Yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have fun in Hawaii. Hurry back. <laughs> okay. Let's play a little bit. There you go. <laughs> Now you're just gonna put that, set that on the plate, okay? Now, hmm, let's go ahead and slice up the, I'm gonna use nectarines peaches. I'm using them interchangeably, clearly. Um, now you guys, when you're slicing up a peach, 
you want to take your knife and you're going to just tap it on the top until you feel the pit, okay? And then just turn the knife around, all the way around, and then you're going to do a 90 degree angle, do the pit again, let your knife, I always say let the knife do its job. Okay, now you're going to just turn it, you're going to turn it, <laughs> one of these, it's going to supposed to turn, there we go. These are not um, fully ripe, <laughs> so, and I tend to get my fruit, oh man, okay, this works on softer fruit, <laughs> not, oh, okay, well, next time, note to myself, don't buy, you know how crunchy that is? Mm. It's not ripe, and, well, it's ripe, but I mean, it's not too ripe to where it's soft. This is really, um, well, really hard. Okay, but you have your little slices. What it's supposed to do is it'll give you four slices, and then I like to cut them in half. So I get eight slices. Look at that, you guys. I'm going to use the peach for the next one because the peaches are a little more ready. Mm. Okay. So you would add, you would definitely add more peaches. However, maybe I should do one more. Let me cut up one more. Let me cut up one more. Okay. I'm still going to use the same method because I'm thinking that this is going to work. Steam them. What do you mean, Jay? I steamed the first set of peaches, the ones that went into my... Um, what do you call it? The peach cobbler. But I don't want these. I want these to be crisp. Crisp and crunchy. I tend to buy fruit that is not fully ripe yet because that's how I like to eat it. But it doesn't lend itself to this type of cutting at all. Okay. So what do you mean though, Jay? Do you steam then when you're serving them with like with with um with the uh, with cream and stuff tell me tell me tell me your secrets all right i'm not gonna put the ugly ones on there oh that defeats the whole purpose of pretty plating okay you guys now we have our but jay come on i can't like do the norm give me a break <laughs> So now look, you guys, here's peaches and cream. Mmm, look at that. Now, you can set this out. If you guys, you know what people, okay, so like you go by, oh, people are dipping. Mmm, 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 mmm. Now, you can't go back for another dip because then that's double dipping, and that's just really gross. So, <laughs> you want to take a little demi toss spoon and leave the spoon in there as well. So people, do their thing, and it's like, oh, look, a little spoon. I could take a little teeny bit out because the spoon is really, really teeny. Put a little bit on. Mm. No double dipping. Okay. So that was peaches and cream. You guys, the cream is delicious. You've got to give it a try. Okay, now, now we are going to grill up some peaches. I'm gonna get some other ingredients out because we're going to make a cheese platter with the grilled peaches, okay? Coming back. I got some um, prosciutto yesterday and some blue cheese from the butcher. Okay, I've already turned, oh, I better be careful. Okay, you guys with me, with me? Okay, so I have the grill on, and this is my indoor Cuisinart grill, which I use a lot. It's a griddle and a panini maker, and it comes with these different plates that you can put on. So there's a flat plate, and then there's the, um, the griddle. What do you call this? Like barbecue plates. So we're going to get some really pretty lines on the peaches. Okay, I am going to use peaches for this one. Now with this, I don't want... So a lot of times you'll just cut these in half, take the seed out, and then you place the both halves on there. But I want to do, I want these to be like, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 peach chips. All right. 
So let's see, let's see if this method works since this is not as crispy. Oh, uh, you're supposed to be able to turn it. Oh, I, I'm squishing the fruit. Do you guys see all the fruit juice? I'm mutilating this peach. This isn't working. I'm going to slice it <laughs> until I get to the seed. Uh, there we go. I just want some nice slices onto the grill. This is what I'm going for. I just want some slices. Some slices. All right? Set those aside. I'm going to do another one that I didn't squeeze all the juice out of. Yeah, don't squeeze all the juice. <laughs> My little knife trick didn't exactly uh, pan out. Let's see, how close am I to the seed? Mm, I think I'm going to be good with this one. All right, you guys. I'm going to take a little butter. I have already put um, some olive oil on top of the griddler to keep it, well, lubricated. I'm gonna, how, how's that? I, I want to keep my grill lubricated. I'm trying to find the right words. <laughs> I'd be, wait, be surprised about what? Oh, that people don't like crispy fruit? Who doesn't like crispy fruit? Oh, and you know what? It, <laughs> I cannot, oh my gosh, like, oh, even bananas, like, bananas that are too yellow, like they're a little mushy, it's like, oh, that's it. It's like, mine have to be like a little green. I can't be the only person that likes, oh, like papaya. I can't eat that, right? I cannot eat nectarines or peaches, right? I can't eat, um, oh, mushy watermelon. I don't dig that either. I'm not a mushy mush. Okay. Uh-oh, I've got to check on our little pies. I'm going to put a little bit of butter. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of butter on each side. Hold on. Let me check real quick on what we got going on in the oven. Oh, Oh, they look amazing. Okay, I'm gonna do it for like another um, three minutes. Okay, so, oh, my griddler's hot. Now, it is hot, right? This better be hot. Oh yeah, what are we doing, what are we doing? Yeah, oh. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little butter on each side. Again, you guys, Where's Jay? Where'd Jay go? You didn't answer me about the fruit. Oh, wait, was that even a question? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, a little bit of butter. You guys can use a pastry brush to do this as well. I um, I have a little pastry brush, but it's like such a pain to get it like really clean. And I feel like unless I run it through the actual dishwasher, it doesn't really get clean. And then of course, I tend to use my dishwasher for more of a drying rack. I'm not sure why I do that. I think that comes from my mom never really using the dishwasher, even though we had one, but using it more as a, dry, a drying rack. <laughs> go, Asians, go. Okay. Yeah. So our last two here. Mm. Butter's so yummy, you guys. There. Now, anybody, Robert, what are you doing for this long weekend? Anything exciting? Are you going to go try some new restaurants? Go into any barbecues? It's all about food. Well, it's not just about food. This holiday is not just about food. <laughs> but food's a big part of the holiday. Okay, we get another board. <coughs> Okay, let me just clean up a bit. Now, while these are frying up, ooh, do you see it steaming? Time for another steam bath. Okay, get those going. I'm gonna check again. I don't want these to overcook. I think. Ooh, I don't want them to burn, and they're start, they bubbled over, which looks beautiful. The gym. What? Here we go. What are you guys talking about? Oh my gosh, okay, I can't keep up with the checks. Okay, so you guys, we um, have a cobbler in the oven. 
and we went ahead and did um, some peaches and cream, sliced peaches and cream. Now we're grilling up some peaches. Now you guys, when you grill up, again, just like with the steam, when you steam the fruit, it really intensifies the flavor of the peach, and it's gonna leave some really, I hope, some really pretty grill marks, but that sweetness, it's gonna, it's, not only does it intensify the peach flavor, it's gonna make them seem, it's gonna be more sweet, all right? Okay, I am gonna let them sit in the oven for just a little bit longer. Now, for this, the grilled peaches. Now, you guys, this is an amazing little appetizer, like a precursor before dinner, especially if it's just you and a girlfriend or a guy friend that you have over. Now, I have these old cutting boards. This is one, um, it, was, it was always too small, so I never really used it. So I turned it into a cheese platter tray. So I took some little, um, what do you call these little fuzzy thingies? It's these adhesive little fuzzy things. And I put them on the bottom so it doesn't go anywhere. And then I can use the top to like display foods. Now it's small. So that's why I say this is perfect for two people. A little appetizer with some champagne before dinner. Oh, we have got grill art. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Woo -hoo -hoo. I'm excited. Okay. So we're going to keep these grilling. I don't want to put the... Oh, we need more grill marks. More grill marks. Come on, baby. Come on. Okay. Let me do this. Okay. I've got the meat. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, guys, Asia, Asia, move. All right, so I purchased some from the picture, some prosciutto. Oh, this is the blue cheese. Woo, surprise! Where's the prosciutto? Ooh, I smell the blue cheese. Okay. Oh, bitch. A few slices of prosciutto. Now, the prosciutto goes really, really good with the grilled fruit, especially grilled peaches. Because the grilled peaches are going to be so sweet, and the prosciutto has just the right amount of saltiness. Okay, you're going to take, ooh, looky, looky. You're going to take the prosciutto, and you can make, look at it. Oh, you can make nice little rolls. Roll it up like this. So people can, well, whoever that comes over, can grab some peach at one of the grilled peaches. They grab a little bit of prosciutto. You can also do this like you could do the peach and then put the prosciutto on top, a little bit of blue cheese, put a toothpick in it. But I want to do, I want to make this like a little presentation. All right. Prosciutto on the side like that. And then... We're going to take some blue cheese. Now, blue cheese, I always, whenever I get the blue cheese, I like the butcher to just, or the, the cheese guy, <laughs> to just like cut a chunk. I don't like the, I don't like it when he slices the cheese. So you always get in a chunk. That way it just, it looks so pretty. Um, it's pretty to present as well. You guys can see. Oh, I'll put it right there like that. Now we're going to put the peaches right here. Now, the blue cheese is really, really pungent, and you wouldn't think that, it would taste so good with the grilled peaches, but for for whatever reason, it tastes delicious. Now, and you guys, there's like, look at, you see those beautiful grill marks? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to let those finish growing. Um, I was going to tell you guys, there's like 40, oh, there's probably even more, um, different types of blue cheeses. So this is a Danish blue cheese. It's not as pungent. I've had some blue cheeses where, like, seriously, the smell alone, I couldn't even eat it. So this one is, it's it's pungent, but it, it's a little bit more mild. So make sure you guys, you can always, like, sample all the different cheeses whenever you go to a cheese shop. They'll let you try them. So don't just blindly get something. Make sure to try it first and see if you actually like it. So you're not shocked when you get home that it doesn't taste good. 
All right. Let's check on our cobbler. Okay, well, for the sake of the show, we can pull them out anyway. <laughs> we may be pulling out too soon. <laughs> okay, you guys, look. Here's the cobblers. Ooh. Okay, I'm just going to set them on top of this soap and let them cool off a little bit while we finish putting this plate together. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know, right? Craziness. So crazy. So crazy on this show. Uh oh, uh oh. One of those on the bark. Um, 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 um. My mouth is watering. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know. Every show, it tends to go there like a little bit. I don't mean it to. I don't mean for it to do that. I mean, I don't think. Maybe subliminally. I'm not sure. I, I don't have an answer. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put these onto the plate just to show you guys. Mm, let me take the ones that don't. Ah! Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice, warm, yummy peaches. <laughs> I was like, wait, am I using nectarine or am I using peaches? These are peaches. Okay. This one is a dead. That one did not work well. Go that one away. Mmm. This is great, you guys, for indoor grilling. And now that I have my hood range, it's like I'm cooking a lot more inside, not outside. <laughs> All right, look at how pretty this is. Now, also, what else was I? I was going to put one thing on this, and I think what I was going to do. Okay, so you've got the grilled peaches, you have the prosciutto, and then you have the blue cheese. It was some of the best cheese, some of the... Um, the peaches and cream cream. Okay, yes, that's what I was gonna do. Got a little um a little cheese knife here as well. Hey! Got a little cheese knife, just leave that on the flat. You guys, it's so pretty. And it's like I think that whenever you have people over and you're entertaining, it's like everything just it it, it makes such a difference when the presentation is so beautiful and then of course the food tastes really yummy as well. It just kind of ups ups things just a bit. All right, you can take another colorful bowl. Now, see, this not only goes well with the um, the nectarines, peaches, but you can also put a little bit in a bowl. Take your demi toss spoon, and um, um, you can also set the bowl on there as well. So now they have the option of either doing the hard cheese, which is the brie. Well, it's not even a hard cheese. It's more of a crumbling cheese. You got your grilled peaches, the prosciutto, and another flavor is the um, the cream, which is the labni and the honey. Now, you guys, you can take it up another step by adding, you can drizzle a little bit of honey or some balsamic vinaigrette, vinegar, vinaigrette. Or it just makes, it's just a pretty presentation. Don't do a lot because remember, see, very little. It just makes it pretty. Pretty food is pretty to eat. All right, look at this. I'm going to take some shots of this afterwards. Um, you guys, and I'll post them as well. Look. Okay, so now, oh, so now we've got peaches and cream, and we have our cheese, um, our grilled peaches with the cheese and meat platter. Now, let's, let's see how our peach gobbler turned out. <laughs> I don't think they're done cooking, but you guys get the gist. I must keep cooking them. I'll keep cooking them and then um, put a picture out. I shouldn't have baked. This is too much dough. I shouldn't have baked. Yeah, it's still a little wobbly in the middle, but you guys, you can kind of get an idea of how these are going to look. Again, I'll post a picture. No, I think it gets washed out when I go that close. Look at this, and you have the beautiful peaches with the little specks of cinnamon on the top, the dough. Oh, you know what this reminds me of, you guys? It's like, you know the presentation of like French onion soup? Bam, right here. So put these on a little platter. 
and serve and put little spoons next to them and serve them um, with the little spoons and people can just use these little cups. Hello, these come in all different colors and different designs as well. Great, great, I'm so glad I purchased these. At first I was just like, uh, I'm not gonna like bake in no paper cups. Okay, I'm going to put these back in the oven and then you're back, you're back, woohoo, and the show is over. <laughs> okay, oh, so if I would have just baked the cup, the little, the ones with the cupcake tins by themselves, they'd probably be done. But because I put the loaf in there as well and it's using up some of the heat, and of course will take longer because there's more mixture. So the bottom line, they're not done because I should not have mixed both of them in there together. Okay, so let those keep cooking and let's see, what else? Meat peach cobbler, grilled peaches, meat and cheese, peaches and cream. I think that's it. <laughs> well, I took that to you guys tuning in. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for um, tuning in with me on this Friday morning. And I hope you guys enjoyed the recipes. I hope it was easy to follow along, sort of, right? Um, again, I'm going to be posting pictures. And make sure, if you haven't subscribed yet and you're just watching, make sure to subscribe because there's extra perks when you subscribe. And the perk is you get a notification when I have my show. So there you go. There's a perk. <laughs> um, make sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram and on Pinterest. And the username for all of it is Kim Lai Yingling. I hope everybody has a wonderful Memorial Day weekend, eats lots of yummy food, and um, has creates lots of memories with family and friends this weekend. I'll see you guys Tuesday at 1130. Mwah! Have a happy Friday, everybody. Bye-bye.